Now that we got the overview out of the way, let's get started. Since this is a front-end track, we don't want to spend too much time setting up the back-end. This is where GraphQL comes into play. GraphQL is a service that provides a production-ready GraphQL API out of the box. Today we're going to use the GraphQL CLI to generate the server based on the data model that we need for the app. Speaking of the data model, here's what the final version of it looks like written in the GraphQL schema definition language. We'll refer to that as SDL for short. For starting out, we're not going to use the full data model. That's because we want to evolve the schema when it becomes necessary for the features that we implement. For now, we're just going to use the link type to create our backend. The first thing you need to do is install the GraphQL CLI with NPM. Open up a terminal window and type the following. Now you can go and create the server. Let's type the following command into the terminal. This will execute the GraphQL init command with two arguments, first being the schema. This option accepts a .graphql schema that's either stored locally or in a remote URL. In your case, you're using the starter schema stored at GraphQL bin. We'll take a look at that in a bit. Second argument is name. This is the name of the GraphQL project you're creating. Here you're simply calling it Hacker News. Note that this command will open up a browser window and ask you to authenticate on the GraphQL platform. The schema that's stored at GraphQL bin only defines the link type for now. Let's take a look. Once the project was created, you'll find the GraphQL project file, usually project.graphql, in the directory where you executed the command. It should look pretty similar to this. The top of the file contains some metadata about the project, namely the project ID and the version number of the schema. The user and file types are generated by GraphQL and have some special characteristics. User can be used for authentication and file for file management. Also notice that each type has three fields called ID, created at, and updated at. These are managed by the system and read only for you. All right, let's jump on into the front end. Next, we're gonna create a React project. As mentioned in the beginning, you'll use Create React App just for that. If you haven't already, you need to install Create React App using NPM. Next, you can use it to bootstrap your React application. We're going to type Create React App, and we're going to give it a project name. In this case, will be Hacker News React Apollo. This will create a new directory called Hacker News React Apollo that has all the basic configurations set up. Make sure everything works by navigating into the directory and starting the app. This will open a browser and navigate to localhost 3000 where the app is running. If everything went well, you'll see the following. Next, you should move project.graphcool into the Hacker News directory to manage everything in one place. To improve the project structure, you can create two directories both inside the source folder. The first is called components and will hold all our React components. And we'll call the second one styles, and this is for all our CSS files. Now let's clean up some existing files accordingly. Let's move app.js into components and app.css as well as index.css into styles. Your project structure should now look like the following. This tutorial is mainly about the concepts of GraphQL and how you can use them within a React application, so we want to spend as least amount of time as possible on styling. To ease up a usage of CSS in this project, you'll use the Tachyons library which provides a number of CSS classes. Let's open up index.html and add a third link tag right below the two existing ones that pull Tachyons in. Since we still want to have a bit more custom styling here and there, we prepared some styles for you that you need to include in the project. Open index.css and replace its contents with the following. Next, we're going to need to pull in the functionality of Apollo Client that's all bundled in the React Apollo package. So now we'll install React Apollo. Sweet! Now we're ready to write some code. Now that we have Apollo Client installed, let's get started. Apollo abstracts away all lower level networking logic and provides a nice interface to the GraphQL API. 
In contrast to working with REST APIs, you don't have to deal with constructing your own HTTP requests anymore. Instead, you can simply write queries and mutations and send them using the Apollo client. The first thing you have to do when using Apollo is configure your Apollo client instance. It needs to know the endpoint of your GraphQL API so it can deal with network connections. Open up the index.js file and replace the contents with the following. Let's try to understand what's going on here. First, we're going to import the required dependencies from the React Apollo package. This is the Apollo provider, create network interface, and Apollo client. Here you create the network interface and you will replace that placeholder that says simple API endpoint with your actual endpoint in a bit. Next we instantiate the Apollo client by passing in the network interface and finally you render the root of your React app. The app is wrapped with the higher order component Apollo provider and gets passed in the client as a prop. Next, you need to replace the placeholder for the GraphQL endpoint with your actual endpoint. But where do we get that from? There are two ways for you to get your endpoint. You can either open the GraphQL console and click the endpoints button in the bottom left corner. The second option is to use the CLI. Let's do that. In the terminal, navigate into the directory where project.graphcool is located and use the following command, graphcool endpoints. Sweet, now we have an endpoint. Copy the endpoint for the simple API and paste it into index.js to replace the current placeholder. Awesome, now we're set to start loading data into our apps.